It was a Friday night, and it was in late March, earlier this year, when I noticed my sister wasn't in the house. Confused, I texted her. Where are you? She didn't reply, so I tried again. Maisie, where are you? This time she answered, uh, I'm safe um, with a friend. Something wasn't right, but despite my worries, I continued anyway. This is a decision I live to regret, because at 11 that night, my dad came into my room. West Middlesex Hospital had called, and my sister had been admitted. In the taxi on the way there, I worried. Had she been attacked, raped, or even murdered? When I got there, she was in the bed. She looked, she looked okay. A little distressed, maybe. Eyes red, but fine. Except she wasn't fine. Maisie suffers with bipolar disorder, which is a mental illness that affects your emotions. It means she either feels erratically high or depressingly low. This was a low so extreme that the voices in her head told her to kill herself. It was mental itself that something as simple as a chemical imbalance in her brain could have such a dramatic effect on me and my family. I didn't tell anyone at school because I thought I was alone. But I wasn't. In fact, one in four people suffer with mental illness in their lifetime. That means everyone in this room will be touched with it. I have come to the conclusion that we are all, we're none of us are normal. We need to celebrate our similarities and our differences and our mental illnesses and embrace them. Otherwise, we'll live afraid and embarrassed. Speak up. After all, who knows what is going on inside your head?